Hi, before I start the video, I wanted to say this is kind of a long, hopefully not too rambling, but discussion about making shakuhachi where I don't actually show you how to make it. Um, if you want to know the measurements, uh, I have them in the description if you don't want to watch the whole video. Just for a basic 1.8 length. Um, otherwise, there's lots of or it's easy to find videos of people like physically making it, but it's not always easy to find the measurements. But uh, if you need more than what I've given you, there's you can find it on the internet. So here's the video. Hello and welcome to this video. I received a comment a few days ago that a person was uh, wanting me to talk about making uh, shakuhachi because they're so expensive. And um, I was thinking, yeah, you're right, they are so expensive. And I started out making them out of PVC. Here I have some examples. Uh, because I wanted to just try it, you know? Um, and then eventually I kept looking at pictures and stuff, and I really wanted to get a bamboo one. Well, th this, uh, this story is in a different video that you'll find in the Shakuhachi playlist on my channel. But I bought this, and it was sold as if it was a traditional flute, which is not. Um, it is in tune and everything, but the bore is made out of epoxy, and then um, this top part isn't the way it should be. Later I bought this off of eBay for $100, and it has this big kind of crack that was patched in the back. I put all of these bindings on myself. I had to fix the joint here so that it wasn't too loose. And then I kind of filled this crack a little bit. I did a really crappy job, but it plays well enough for me. So anyway, the first thing you want to think about if you're, or realize if you're making a shakuhachi is that a shakuhachi can be extremely basic. Um, like this is just a straight bore and it's just the five holes and then the top. But um, the better you are at playing, which I'm not good at all, um, you want there to be uh, characteristics to the bore that make it so you can achieve the sounds that you want. And that's why when they get really expensive. So if you want to make your own shakuhachi, you have to decide what material. Um, and I would recommend starting with PVC because you don't have to worry. You can work out finger hole placement and practice that. You can practice cutting this top part. Um, uh, all those things on a really cheap material. And then later, if you want to do it in wood or bamboo, you can figure that out. You have to, I mean, you have to have a bamboo source if you want to do that. If you want to do it in wood, you have to have a way to drill a really long straight hole into wood. So anyway, um, let's start with this top part called the, oh, this part here is the Utaguchi. I can't remember like what this part is called, but Anyway, um, after I bought this one, I made this template, uh, and then this is the angle for the, um, for the, the Utaguchi to slant back. And then this part, oops, this part here is the curve of the top there. You don't necessarily need that because, especially if you're just making your own to goof around with, those angles don't matter as much. Like here is an example of a flute made by John Kipros, um, and his doesn't match this angle at all. And then you can see he really rounds this part off a lot to make it comfortable against the chin. Um, and then here's one that I got that was $200, I think. That one rounds off more. Uh, this angle is 
close, but still it's not identical. You can see. I don't know if you can see. Anyway, uh, so that's information, you know, general information about making this top part. If, if you cut an angle like this and you don't um, cut the shape like that, it probably won't be this gentle curve. It'll probably be a sharper U shape and you want it to be more gentle as far as I know. I, I'm not a professional. I don't, I don't I had official training, but I've just read a lot and stuff. If you're gonna care about the bore shape, um, I drew out, I read a article that talked about the theoretical ideal bore shape, and this is a drawing of it. So it starts here uh, at 21 millimeters wide, and then extends down to the narrowest point being right here. Sorry, it's hard to see. And the narrowest point is 16 millimeters wide. And then it flares out slightly to 18 millimeters at the bottom. And then the entire length is uh, 54 millimeters. No, 54 centimeters long. Um, so, so that's just a basic like perfect bore. If you're gonna choose PVC pipe, I had the best look with this three quarter inch um, pipe. You're gonna hear me going back and forth, forth between inches and millimeters because a lot of the things that you read about it say millimeters because Japanese use metric, but um, stuff you get in the US is typically uh, empirical, standard, whatever, inches. So this one, I accidentally bought the wrong size, and this is a half inch, I think? No, this is a one inch. So this is a three quarter inch. Uh, geez, there's so much to talk about. Sorry if it's a little all over the place. But these are both the same pitch, but this is how much longer this is because the bore is skinnier. So the fatter the bore, um, the lower pitch it, the flute will be but it, it'll give you trouble with um, certain pitches if you hit a certain length. So one inch is probably too big. So, okay, so there's that. Finger hole placement. Oh, uh, this one, let me show you this one real quick. This is one where I melted the plastic to try to make the bore narrow here in the middle. And I kind of tried to make it like nodes. Then I expanded it here at the top. One thing you can do with PVC, if you don't like this um, part here that sticks out, you can heat it up with a heat gun or something, and then um, push a piece of PVC inside of it, wedge it in there. Um, like here's an example where I did that. And it'll make the, make it the wall thicker at the top. And in the case of this, it made it flare out which looks more like a, a bamboo node. Okay, so, so let's go to finger hole size and placement. Generally speaking, I think that most finger holes are uh, around one, um, let's see, one, yeah, one centimeter or 11 millimeters-ish. One thing about the finger holes is almost always they're kind of conical. So like this is the part where you put your finger. Let me show you on this. So it gets a little bit wider as you go down in. And that's one way you can kind of tune the flute. Um, if the hole is a little bit, just a tiny bit off or whatever. You can also tune the flute in ways I don't really understand for um, like if you're tr playing really hard and stuff by um, undercutting the inside of the hole so it's kind of like a conical shape. Okay, here's another basic of just flute hole placement. The farther you put it this way, the lower the note, the farther you go that way, the higher the note. Also, the bigger the hole, the lower the note, the smaller the hole, the higher the note. So you can see here how big these holes are because, and then how that one's smaller,
because I put um, these holes here at the top, they're a little bit too low towards the bottom, and so I had to make them really big to get the pitch I wanted. Okay, if you want to just copy, like, let's say you want to just buy a three quarter inch PVC, uh, and know where to put the holes. So you'll cut your PVC to roughly 21 and a half inches. Yeah, 21 and a half to 21 and 5 eighths inches. And then you can make the top the shape that you want or like. Then um, the hole in the back. So there's four holes in the front, one in the back. The hole in the back, I have it, um, the center of the hole is right around eight and five eighths inches from the top. The next one is around the fourth hole. This the one, next one to the top is right around 10 inches from the top, the center of the hole. Then the next one is right around 12 inches and 12 and 3 eighths inches. The next one is right around, right in between 12, or sorry, 14 and a quarter and 14 and 3 eighths inches. The next one is uh, 16 inches and in between a quarter and 3 eighths. So let me see, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sixteenths. So I'll try to put that on the screens or in the description. Um, so that that's just like the basic, if you buy a piece of PVC, you cut it to length, that's where you can put the holes. And then you know, inches, the holes are around 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, so one other thing to talk about is um, older flutes like Edo period flutes typically have all the, the holes all the same size and spaced the same distance apart. I could there's probably exceptions to this. If you're interested in more Edo period flute information, you should check out Nick Belando at Hone Own H O N dash O N dot com. He knows a lot about Edo period flutes. In any case, more contemporary flutes have um, this uh, third hole slightly smaller than the others. So in this case, it's uh, that one's just under 10 millimeters, and then the other ones on this one are uh, just under 11 millimeters. So trying to think if I covered anything. Let me, everything, let me check in my phone. Okay, some flute makers like to make louder or bigger holes because they make a louder sound. But that's a more modern stylistic choice. If you are a person who didn't want to just make a PVC pipe flute and you wanted to try to make a, a shaped bore, you can buy like measurement gauges that will tell you you can follow this um, thing, which is uh, 54 centimeters long at, um, what is this, uh, about the, I think that's probably about 20 centimeters up from the bottom. This is the narrowest point at 16 millimeters, and it's 21 millimeters at the mouthpiece and 18 at the bottom. So that's a good starting place. The other thing is, this is just extra, I guess. I don't really know about how to fine tune a shakuhachi. I kind of know what you're technically supposed to do, but I can't play shakuhachi at a high level. And I think you have to be able to do that to test if the bore is doing what you want it to. So like one thing you could do is like, if you're um, playing along, like you play the lowest note row and it squeaks when you play hard, if you go like halfway up from the bottom, uh, you can adjust the bore at that spot. And one way you can 
test is by putting a bead on a string or like a piece of paper that's wet and folded up and then you stick it to the side and slide it to the spot you want. All of that is super complicated and um, then you have to know how to play well to get to make the to expose the flaws in the bore of the flute. So I, I don't really know about that too well. Anyway, I <laughs> my brain feels totally scatterbrained, um, but uh, hopefully that was helpful information. Hopefully it was coherent. But uh, like I said, there's so much to learn about it. There's lots of places online to look it up. And um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. That's all I got. Uh, thanks for asking the question, the person who did. And um, please consider checking out some of my other videos. And if you want to support the channel, uh, please subscribe. Bye!